Breakups always hurt. Maybe you didn't see it coming and the other person suddenly wants out. Or maybe you were convinced it needed to end, but you knew how hard it would be to tell them. Maybe you've been together for years. Maybe you love their family and friends without the ceremony and covenant. It's not a divorce, but it can feel like it. It feels like divorce for a reason. You weren't made for this misery. When your heart is broken after a breakup, living by faith is all you have. You can find so many preaching about what happened at the Red Sea, but you got to get to the Red Sea in order for that to happen. And the enemy doesn't even want you to make it to the Red Sea. But you know the Israelites, they had to keep moving forward to get to the Red Sea. And Moses was talking to God because sometimes you don't have nobody else to talk to. He couldn't talk to Pharaoh because Pharaoh was chasing him. And he couldn't talk to the Israelites because they were mad at him. And sometimes in the fearful place, the worst part of the fear is that there's nobody to talk to. And maybe you wouldn't be so afraid if you could just talk about it. And Moses had nobody to talk to, so he cried out to God. What do you do when you find yourself in something that you didn't sign up for? Do you know something I found out about God? He doesn't tell you all the details. He told Moses, just go down there and tell Pharaoh to let my people go. God didn't mention Pharaoh was gonna try to kill Moses when he did it. You see, those little details can help a brother out. I would kind of like to know if he's gonna assign 600 hitmen to come kill me before I get started. I didn't sign up for this. And he looked up to God and he says, what am I supposed to do? The people you sent me to help, they don't even like me. The people I'm trying to help don't like me. My own child don't like me. My mom don't like me. The people who are supposed to be on my team, I don't mind having to fight the devils, but the people that are in my inner cycle, what do you do when the very people that you're trying to help don't even appreciate you? I don't mind fighting my enemies, but I didn't expect to have to fight you too. <laughs> And then God says the strangest thing to him. He called on God to help. And God did absolutely nothing at that moment. Now, preachers don't preach about that. They preach the sermons where you called on the Lord and the Lord moved. I don't really need you to tell me what to do when I call on the Lord and the Lord moves. I need somebody to tell me what to do when I call on the Lord and nothing happens. What do you do when you ask him to heal and he doesn't? What do you do when you ask him for prosperity and they take your car? What do you do when things aren't turning out the way you had in mind? I'll tell you what you do, keep it moving. Yes, you heard me right, keep moving. You gotta understand that some of the release of the power of God can only be released if you keep moving. Yeah, if you don't keep it moving, it's not gonna work. The enemy's trying to shut you down and leave you paralyzed. But the Lord said, I don't care what triggers you here. I don't care what sound you heard. I don't care how disappointed you are at their reaction towards you. Just keep moving. So God says to Moses, tell the people to keep it moving. And God said to me to tell you today, keep it moving. I know you're scared, but keep it moving. I know the enemy is playing your triggers, but keep it moving. I know you don't know the outcome of this situation, but keep it moving. I know you wish he stayed with you forever, but keep it moving. He is God and he knows what you need. And he knows what it takes to keep you fresh. And he knows what it takes to get the glory out of your life. And it's his job to be God and it's your job to keep moving. I, I know you're scared, but keep it moving. Keep it moving. What God got planned will only work if you keep moving. The miracle is in the movement. If you stop right there, Pharaoh will overtake you and destroy you keep moving and you're going to walk right into the power of god and god's going to get the glory in your life it's a test god is seeing if you're ready to go to the next level if you will get upset bitter and start thinking about how you're going to pay them back or are you going to kiss it goodbye and keep running your race and enjoying your life see those adversaries are getting you prepared for your destiny where you're going there will be opposition, critics, people trying to pull you down. The good news is no weapon formed against you will prosper. Hallelujah. They cannot stop you. Why? Because the forces that are for you are greater than the forces that are against you. So stay on the high road and stay focused on what God has put in your heart. You don't have time to get distracted by all the negative chatter. What people think about you is none of your business. 
what they're saying shouldn't concern you. There will always be somebody that doesn't like you. Kiss it goodbye and keep moving forward. A huge part of learning how to live by faith is to remember. But the key is to remember the right things. When your heart is broken after a breakup, you're tempted to dwell on the pain and loss of losing someone you love. It's okay to be sad. In fact, if you're not sad, that's a little concerning. Your heart is broken. A relationship you deeply cared about has ended. You will experience a period of grief, and that isn't a bad thing. We live in a world that is constantly trying to tell us it's not good to be sad, that if we're sad, we need to fix it. And because of this, we try to numb ourselves by texting new people, binging on Netflix and becoming overly busy, even by sleeping and by entering into new relationships. But at the end of the day, that doesn't change the fact that our hearts are grieving. Numbing yourself is like putting a band-aid on a gaping wound. Sure, it might cover it up, but if you're not properly caring for the wound, it won't actually heal. So I encourage you to allow yourself to grieve, to let yourself feel the pain. But remember what is written in Psalm 30 verse 5. Weeping may last for the night, but joy comes in the morning. This too will pass. Did you hear that? I said this too will pass away. While the pain won't disappear overnight, your heart will heal. Day by day, the heaviness will become lighter. It will become easier to bear, and you will find out your thoughts are not so consumed by this moment in time. As you heal, you will become stronger. Eventually, you will be free of that pain, I promise. But I want you to know that it's a process, and do not become discouraged. See, living by faith is about holding on to your hope and releasing your expectation of how your life should unfold. Living by faith means letting go of the expectations you had of your past relationship, but not giving up on God. After a breakup, living by faith means trusting that if you accept that Jesus died so you could be saved, God really is working all things together for your good. When your heart is broken, living by faith is allowing God's will to unfold in your life without resisting, complaining, or wishing it wasn't so. Learning how to live in faith means giving up your own plans, hopes, and expectations for your life. Living by faith is releasing your life to God and allowing Him to walk you through painful seasons of life. And yes, living by faith means patiently accepting His plans for your life while working toward healing in small ways. Our God is a healer. He restores the broken, and I'm rest assured that He will heal your heart too. So refocus your attention and affection on God and then keep moving forward. God bless you.